James and Betty, my first year of marriage, I was going to work in rush hour traffic in a 59 Pontiac, which was old even the year I got married, <laughs> and my accelerator stuck. And I had to swerve at the corner in order to avoid an accident, but my car had picked up so much speed, it hit a car waiting to make a left-hand turn. That car hit a car behind it. I was now rushing toward the next intersection, pulling on the emergency brake with a car that was still gaining in speed, and I instinctively thought, I'm going to steer this car into a telephone pole so I don't cause another accident in that next intersection. And as I steered toward the telephone pole, I thought, if I stay here, I'll be dead, so I'd better evacuate. So I steered the car toward the telephone pole, jumped into the middle of the street, just in time to see my car swerve when it hit the curb. It went right into the intersection and hit another car that hit a car behind it. That is now a five-car collision counting my vehicle. It circled in the intersection section, pulled out a fire hydrant, a park bench, and then finally crashed into the plate glass window of the IBM building in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> Police officers goodness. came from everywhere and one said, lady, what happened? I said, my accelerator stuck. He said, lady, why didn't you turn the ignition off? I said, I never thought of it. No, I know you would have thought of it. Uh, You're a guy. I might have thought neutral. I might have tried to go to neutral, but oh, that, I don't know if I would have thought of that. Well, the next day, the, the paper said, driverless car hits window of IBM <laughs> building, and there was my name in the paper. <laughs> and do you know, there was a time when I felt like my unquenchable faith was starting to turn to ashes hmm. because the financial implications were huge. We went through seven years and multiple trials. <laughs> and every time I was declared innocent of wrongdoing because of a stuck accelerator, of a freak happening in my car. <laughs> but it was a time when I began to say, God, are you for real? These financial pressures are too huge. And I remember my husband, taking me by the hand and we got on our knees at one of our kitchen chairs and he began to pray and he said, God, we know nothing can touch us without your permission and we submit to your authority mm. and what you want us to learn through this. Now, if my younger self could have spoken to my older self, uh, I would have said, this isn't the worst thing you'll ever go through. Mm -hmm. uh, your son's incarceration and conviction of first degree murder will be the worst firestorm. And I've discovered God is with us in the fire yes, yes. and he never leaves us and he is victor. And Satan is not God's cosmic equal. He is victor. And I praise God that when the flame of adversity meets the flame of God, he wins. Wow.